My name's Sarah, and I'm the Senior Director of Perception at Zooks. If you've been following Zooks for a while, you've likely seen videos of us driving autonomously in complex urban environments, including San Francisco and Las Vegas. Today, I want to share some insights into one part of the software that enables our vehicles to drive autonomously, the computer vision system. This module is responsible for understanding the world around our vehicle based on the real-time feeds from cameras mounted all around our vehicle. Along with the LiDAR and radar pipelines, it makes up the perception stack. The perception stack is effectively the eyes of the driving system, giving the rest of our software detailed information about the world around us so that we can plan and drive safely and competently. Given the camera feeds, we compute several important outputs on each image using neural networks. That includes computing for each object of interest in the scene, a 2D box that encloses it along with a mask indicating which pixel belongs to this object, a task that is called instant segmentation. We also compute what semantic class each pixel belongs to. For example, is it a pedestrian, a car, a sidewalk, road, vegetation? And we can also predict for each pixel what is its depth in the world, even though cameras can't measure distances directly. In addition to this, we predict the 3D bounding box location for each dynamic object of interest in the scene just from cameras, for example, for the vehicle scene here. If you've been watching our autonomous driving videos for a while, you already know there are many objects that we see in the real world that our vehicles are able to detect and classify. To name just a few, pedestrians, pedestrians with different appearances and poses, pedestrians on scooters, dogs, pedicabs, motorcycles, trams, fire trucks, and so on. In addition to this classification, we also compute several attributes for our detected classes that are useful for the rest of the stack. I'm going to talk about some of the attributes for just two of our classes today, pedestrians and vehicles. First up, we have skeleton detection. For each pedestrian, we detect the positions of all the key points on their skeleton, like their hands, their elbows, torsos, knees, and so on. This is a video showing these key points for people encountered in several different drives. These key points can then be used for higher level tasks, such as tracking, gesture detection, prediction of intent. Speaking of higher level signals, one of the most important things we can infer about a pedestrian is whether they are standing or walking. This is a cue that people can often pick up on given just an image or two. And we can use this cue in order to be able to quickly say whether, for example, a person who was stopped suddenly decides to cross the road. In our software, we have a network that is able to produce this signal, which we are visualizing in this video. Semantics of scenes are very important. For example, if the person standing in our path is a construction worker, we might need to slow down or stop, or understand that the rules of the road might somehow have changed. In these videos, we show our networks classifying whether each person detected is a construction worker, as indicated by the construction person icon. We also detect whether a construction person is holding a sign, as shown in this video. Another signal we use as humans to predict what people will do in the future and how to behave around them is how distracted they might be. Generally, an alert driver will try to drive more cautiously around people who are distracted and are therefore less likely to be paying attention. Here, we show our network predicting one of these key distractions for pedestrians, looking at their phones. Fun fact, we label more than 30 different attributes for people, including whether they are pushing strollers, riding scooters, exiting cars, and staring at phones is one of the attributes we see the most often in real life. The final signal from vision that we cover for pedestrians is incredibly powerful, pedestrian gestures. Many times, we have to infer pedestrian intentions from a variety of input signals, including position, heading, velocity, the semantics of the scene, and some attributes that I described before. But other times, a gesture can tell us exactly what the pedestrian wants. Do they want us to stop, or do they want us to continue driving? We found that gestures are actually very strongly correlated with what people end up doing in the future. Here are a couple of examples where we detect whether people are indicating they want us to stop because they want to cross the road, usually by holding up their arm or their hand. And here are some more examples where people wave us on, indicating they want us to continue. Let's switch gears now and talk a bit about the various vehicle attributes our system is able to classify. There are several very important attributes we compute for vehicles, starting with vehicle lights. Vehicle lights, such as indicator lights, reverse lights, brake and hazard lights, are very important indicators of the intentions of the drivers around us. And using these signals enables us to build much better prediction of what people are going to do. Another set of vehicle attributes that are important for us to understand are whether the vehicles are emergency vehicles, and if so, whether their emergency vehicle lights are on, 
since the presence of these vehicles can mean that we have to behave very differently, including stopping or pulling over to the side of the road. In these videos, we show the detection of several different types of emergency vehicles, including ambulances, police vehicles, and we also classify when the emergency lights on these vehicles are turned on. One final vehicle attribute that we will talk about today is open doors. In this city, road lanes are often quite narrow, forcing us to have to drive close to parked cars. Although it doesn't happen too frequently, we need to be wary of the doors of one of these vehicles suddenly opening, not only to avoid the door itself, but also because a door opening is usually followed by a person walking out onto the road. In these videos, we show cases where we encounter a car door suddenly opening, and you can see how the vision system detects that. So there you have it. We went over a small but essential part of the software stack that drives our autonomous vehicle, the computer vision system. I hope you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for more videos explaining other aspects of our software stack and self-driving capabilities.